Nestled in the heart of northern Texas lies McKinney, a city with vibrant streets and historic charm. Situated about 30 miles north of Dallas, McKinney beckons with a blend of old-world allure and modern conveniences. Known for its picturesque downtown square adorned with quaint shops, inviting eateries, and historic buildings, this city exudes a captivating small-town feel while offering the amenities of a bustling urban center. However, within this tightly knit community, a disturbing event unfolded. On a calm Wednesday of June 28, 2023, a woman named Tamara Schwab approached the McKinney Police Department to file a missing persons report concerning her 35-year-old daughter, Heather Schwab. She informed the authorities that her relationship with her daughter had been strained due to various issues, most notably Heather Schwab's drug use. She mentioned not having any communication with her daughter for over a year. This prolonged absence had led to escalated concern, prompting her to express worry and urgency regarding her situation. As the investigation commenced a year after the last known contact with Heather, it led police to anticipate a potentially complex case to resolve. However, as they delved into the investigation, various details gradually emerged, unveiling the circumstances one by one. Initially, the police became aware of Heather's connection with a man that she'd been residing with, 42-year-old Chad Christopher Stevens. Tamara, Heather's mother, disclosed to the authorities about her daughter's abusive relationship with Stevens. She conveyed Heather's apprehensions, mentioning that on various occasions in the past, Heather had expressed fears to her mother, believing that Stevens might ultimately harm her and conceal her body. Tamara also mentioned being in touch with a neighbor near Stevens' residence who used to provide her with updates on Heather's whereabouts. However, the neighbor informed her that they hadn't seen Heather for several months, which is what prompted Tamara to file the missing persons report. These alarming statements raised significant concerns, prompting a closer investigation into Stevens. When the police met with Stevens, he told Detective Monte Robertson of McKinney Police Department that Heather had left him the year prior and that he didn't know where she was. Robertson remained dissatisfied with this response, yet lacking a warrant, he couldn't press further. The case was slowly becoming unsolvable. However, seeking additional leads that could potentially result in an arrest, Robertson contacted Tamara once again. On November 3, 2023, Tamara revealed to the police that Stephen had been married before and that she'd heard his ex-wife make a serious accusation, claiming that Stevens had killed Heather and buried her in his backyard. Robertson traveled to Oklahoma on November 4, 2023 to interview Stephen's ex-wife and daughter. The daughter revealed to the authorities that although she didn't communicate with her father frequently, she contacted him on November 2nd to inform him of her pregnancy. His response was alarming. He became very upset and allegedly threatened to harm both the unborn baby and her, insisting she lose the baby or face dire consequences. The daughter cautioned him against making threatening remarks, emphasizing the seriousness of such statements, especially considering his girlfriend's disappearance. Stevens asked his daughter if she thought he was responsible for the disappearance. She told the investigator, per the affidavit, that Stevens had sarcastically stated that he'd killed Heather and buried her in his backyard. Stevens also remarked that even if he had taken action against Heather, the potential punishment would only be five years in prison for concealing the body, stating he was aware of this because he'd looked it up. A detective obtained video footage and photographs of Stevens' property, which revealed several unusual elements in the backyard that piqued investigators' interest. Additionally, authorities reached out to another ex-girlfriend of Stevens who claimed he assaulted her in January 2023. Armed with this information, the police eventually obtained a search warrant for Stevens' home on November 12, 2023 for an assault connected with his ex-girlfriend. And on November 12th, the entire community of McKinney was rattled. Police say they discovered his refrigerator wrapped in copious amounts of plastic wrap. According to the police affidavit, it was in the home's kitchen that had suspiciously been closed and concealed from the remainder of the residence with a piece of sheetrock. Inside it, they found a small statured human body identified by the Collin County ME's office as Heather Schwab. Stevens was arrested on the spot and was taken into custody. Under questioning, he admitted to concealing Heather's deceased body in his refrigerator after her demise at his residence more than a year earlier on July 26, 2022, 
due to his confusion about what steps to take. As additional inquiries ensued, his accounts became contradictory. Nonetheless, he eventually informed the authorities that Heather had fallen in the shower, resulting in a head injury. The narrative appeared fabricated, resembling a common tactic to evade the truth. Nevertheless, the police required additional details about the case before shutting the case once and for all. The police suspect that Heather might have passed away around August 12, 2022, coinciding with a reported domestic disturbance where a woman was seen wielding a firearm while a man yelled at Stevens' address. Stevens is presently held at the Collin County Detention Facility with a bond set at $150,000. It remains uncertain whether he's retained legal representation. The investigation is still ongoing at this time. On the quiet Monday morning of July 17, 2023, the Lincolnshire police received a call like no other. It was 9 a.m., and the call came from St. Mary and St. Nicholas Church in Spalding. The caller reported an injured woman found outside the church grounds, lying unconscious in a tent with blood staining her clothes. But upon arrival, the officers made a grim discovery. The woman wasn't just hurt. She was dead. She'd been dead for seemingly some time, the officers estimated at least a week. This young woman, full of life's potential, now posed a haunting puzzle. Word of the tragedy traveled fast, and through whispers and shared memories, a name emerged. Colette Law, a 26-year-old young woman whose life had been abruptly cut short. How did she end up in a tent outside a church? And most importantly, how did she die? Spalding, a charming market town nestled within Lincolnshire County in England, lies approximately 130 kilometers north of London. This peaceful haven, with its small population, boasts a surprisingly good market culture for its size. Life in Spalding moves at a gentle pace, known for its friendly community spirit and rich farming heritage. It's a place where neighbors lend a helping hand, children play in cobbled alleys, and evenings unfold in friendly pub corners. Crime rates are generally low, with most incidents being minor in nature. This tranquil setting, where everyone knows everyone, would soon become the backdrop for a tragedy that shattered its sense of security, forcing its secrets to rise to the surface. Born under the late summer sun on August 28, 1996, Colette Law entered the world to parents John Law and Patricia Law. Her two elder sisters, Jennifer and Patricia, filled her family life with laughter and shared experiences, from lively karaoke nights to simple family outings. Her childhood unfolded along the streets of Greenock, with St. Mungo's Primary and St. Stephen's High School shaping her early years. Colette, from her teenage years onward, was a bubbly person who loved to spend time with her friends. Her natural humor and infectious happiness would light up the room. While she was the perfect party animal, there was also a side to her that cared deeply about the people around her. She was always ready to lift the spirits of anyone feeling down or lonely. Colette was a spark of creativity. Her artistic spirit found expression in dreams of bigger stages. She twice attempted to step into the spotlight of X Factor and also explored the world of acting and singing through platforms like TikTok. Behind the bright smile, though, she carried the weight of ADHD, a diagnosis that added a layer of complexity to her journey. Colette Law was a warm-hearted individual, often described by her mother as polite and filled with love. She aspired to become a nursery nurse, a dream she pursued through dedicated coursework. Within her family, she was celebrated as a vibrant soul, a wild child who added a special spark to their lives. They fondly recalled shared moments, like their dates watching Grey's Anatomy and Supergirl, while her father indulged in football. Her essence truly completed their family circle. Colette was a warm and loving person, but she faced a tough battle. She started struggling with drug addiction when she was just 16, and despite trying very hard to get better by going to rehab multiple times, she couldn't shake off the hold drugs had on her. Her family saw how much she wanted to beat it, but somehow she kept falling back into using drugs, and it was difficult for everyone to see her struggle like that. In April 2023, Colette Law made a significant move to Spalding, Lincolnshire, in Inverclyde, with her 30-year-old boyfriend, Paul Nielsen, aiming to begin a new chapter in their lives together. During this time, she'd been drug-free for a while. 
but a falling out with her mother left her without a home, leading to her circumstances before her death. This is the reason why she was living in a tent which had been set up in a small grove within the church grounds while waiting for help from the Lincolnshire County Council to secure a permanent place to stay. Several local churches and charitable organizations extended support as the couple worked on rebuilding their lives. The Reverend John Bennett, who served as the vicar of St. Mary and St. Nicholas Church, offered assistance to the couple in June. He provided them with both financial aid and supplied a tent for their living arrangements after an incident where their previous tent had been damaged. Colette's final conversation with her mother took place on July 6, 2023. Following that, her mother didn't receive any calls from her. It wasn't out of the ordinary for Colette to sometimes go a week without getting in touch, so her mother didn't become concerned or file a missing report during this time. Tragically, after this, on the 17th of July, she was discovered lifeless in the tent. The police initially thought Colette was another homeless woman in a tent struggling to identify her. They faced the challenge of piecing together her life, given the scarce evidence at the scene in Spalding. Only her distinctive purple hair and age offered clues, which prompted further investigation. Local authorities unveiled a touching story, but the community rallied to help her. With their help, the police traced her family back to her hometown of Greenock, a quaint Scottish town, confirming her identity as 26-year-old Colette Law. Colette's body was formally identified by a fingerprint officer on July 18, 2023, and a statement verifying this was provided to the coroner. The cause of her tragic passing was initially reported as a head injury awaiting further tests, adding more layers of complexity to the investigation. The case surrounding Colette's passing remained shrouded in mystery, presenting a puzzling absence of clear evidence for the authorities. The investigation timeline indicates the last confirmed contact with Colette was a conversation with her mother on July 6th. Subsequently, CCTV footage spotted her alive on July 10th, indicating she might have been inside the tent for about a week before her discovery on July 17th. Detective Adrian Sechkowski, the senior investigating officer of the Lincolnshire Police Department, stated that they're actively seeking potential witnesses, especially those who might have had contact with Colette between July 12th and 17th. Detectives emphasized the importance of gathering information about her movements in the days leading up to her passing. Even the smallest detail, often dismissed as insignificant, could prove invaluable in discovering the truth behind Colette's death. They've also urged anyone who might have seen or known something to come forward, as even the smallest detail could prove pivotal in their ongoing investigation. After finding no leads to any suspects, the police focused their attention on one person, Paul Nielsen, Colette's boyfriend from Priory Road in Spalding. Despite the absence of concrete evidence, suspicions fell on Paul, especially considering he played a significant role in bringing Colette to Spalding as they were romantically involved as a couple. He was taken into custody on the 23rd of July on suspicion of murder and appeared before the Lincolnshire Magistrates Court on July 24th. During this appearance in court, His Honour Judge Peter Kelson set a plea and trial preparation hearing for Tuesday, August 29th. He appeared in Lincoln Crown Court on the given date, which was just a day after Colette's birthday. He spoke only to confirm his name. Following this court appearance, the police made a significant discovery on September 18th, 2023. They issued an appeal for a crucial witness captured on CCTV, a man riding a bicycle, to come forward and assist in their ongoing investigation. Lincolnshire police took the unusual step of sharing an image of this potential male witness believing he held information vital to the case. Detective Inspector Adrian Sechkowski of Lincolnshire Police emphasized the importance of this appeal, stating that they're seeking assistance in identifying this man, whom they believe is a witness. His information could be crucial as they continue to look into the circumstances surrounding the tragic death of Colette. In Lincoln Crown Court on December 8th, Nielsen pleaded not guilty to charges of murder and manslaughter, He remains in custody, denying these allegations, as he now awaits the provisional trial date scheduled for January 22, 2024. While the legal proceedings are ongoing, the police have urged people to refrain from speculating or making assumptions. Colette's devastated parents expressed their anguish when police officers arrived at their home with the news of their daughter's demise. Patricia Law recalled the overwhelming moment and mentioned that they felt nothing. They simply collapsed. 
both sorrowfully expressed the sentiment that no parent wishes to bury their child. In their 60s, they never anticipated having to bury any of their children. It should have been the other way around. Colette's mother expressed her sorrow that she couldn't see her daughter due to the extensive decomposition of her body. According to the family, Colette passed away from a brain injury. Sadly, they mentioned being unable to bid her farewell due to the condition in which she was discovered. On her recent birthday, Colette's mom shared a picture and wrote a message. She wished Colette a happy birthday and said she would have been 27, but her life was cut short. Her mom said a part of her heart is gone and can't ever be replaced. She expressed the longing to trade places if it were possible, knowing Colette had a promising life ahead of her. Her sisters now face growing up without her, missing the milestones of marriage, children, birthdays, and celebrations. Life feels tough now that they're a family of four instead of five. She ended the message by saying she loved Colette a lot and hoped to meet her again someday on the other end. Colette garnered affection not only from her family, but also from those who knew her briefly. For instance, after the police cordon vanished, Mr. Bennett, the priest at St. Mary and St. Nicholas Church, ventured into the wooded area to offer a prayer for Colette. Describing her, he mentioned her as a vibrant and optimistic young woman who held on to hope for better days. Vanessa Browning, a mental health advocate, also supported Colette during her time in Spalding. Reflecting on the tragedy of her passing, Vanessa expressed sorrow at the loss of a young life and remarked on Colette's pleasant personality. She hoped that the community could unite in offering more support to homeless individuals. The investigation into Colette's death in a tent near the church remains a bit unclear. Though suspicions point towards her boyfriend, there's only circumstantial evidence, leaving their relationship ambiguous. As the trial nears, the search for more evidence persists in pursuit of justice for Colette and her family. Her life was one of resilience despite challenges, but sadly, it was cut short. While her boyfriend is held in custody, it's important to remember that he's innocent until proven guilty. Right now, all we can do is share this information and hope that justice is served for her. This isn't just another case. It's a plea for awareness. Share this within the region. Every detail matters. Your contribution could be vital. If you have any information or footage, please utilize the dedicated Major Incident Public Portal at mipp.police.uk backslash operation backslash 33EM23C97-P01. Alternatively, you can contact crimestoppers-uk.org online or call 0800-555-111 anonymously. Your assistance is crucial in this pursuit of justice for Colette Law. Nestled in the state of Florida, in the midst of Orange County and to the northwest of Orlando, lies the city of Apopka. The place enjoys a convenient location with easy access to the bustling metropolitan areas and scenic attractions of central Florida. Famous for its picturesque landscapes, including expansive parks, serene lakes, and lush greenery, Apopka offers a relaxed lifestyle immersed in nature's beauty. The city embraces a blend of suburban charm and rural appeal, fostering a close-knit community spirit. While Apopka generally remains distant from high levels of criminal activity, it couldn't avoid a shocking event that occurred on November 18th, 2023. However, the chain of events commenced a few days earlier with the filing of a missing persons report to the Winter Springs Police Department. Shakira Yvonne Rucker, a 37-year-old mother of four residing in Winter Springs, became the subject of the missing persons case. The last sighting of Rucker was on November 11th when she departed from her residence at around 7.30 p.m. headed for an unknown destination possibly in the company of her estranged husband, Corey Hill. The search for Rucker commenced soon after the report was filed and spanned across four counties, involving assistance from multiple law enforcement agencies and support from the FBI. Winter Springs Police Chief Matthew Tract, alongside a dedicated team of investigators, committed to working 16- to 18-hour days to swiftly resolve the case and provide closure. After a strenuous week of intensive efforts, their perseverance paid off when, on November 18th, they finally located Rucker.
Very sad breaking news tonight. Just minutes ago, the Orange County Sheriff's Office confirmed that missing mom from Winter Springs has been found dead. Investigators say her body was discovered in a storage unit this evening in a popka after she disappeared last weekend. The Orange County Sheriff Department was alerted via a 911 call on Saturday, November 18th, 2023, that reported a strong odor emanating from a storage unit facility in a popka. At approximately 5 p.m., Law enforcement arrived at the site situated at 2400 Wiggins Road, roughly 20 miles northwest of Orlando. And within the confines of the storage unit, the quest to locate Shakira Rucker came to an end, but in the most horrible way. Upon unsealing the unit, deputies found Rucker deceased, displaying evident gunshot wounds. Even though Rucker's destiny had been determined, the pursuit of justice began. Amidst the entire narrative, one individual remained the focus point of the investigation. The person the storage unit was registered to, none other than Rucker's estranged husband, 51-year-old Corey Hill. When they looked for him, police found that on November 13, 2023, Hill had already been incarcerated in the Orange County Jail for a different incident, merely five days before law enforcement discovered Rucker's body. He is already in the Orange County Jail. Uh, and charged with four counts of attempted at homicide for shooting at his girlfriend and family back on November 12th, and he is in there under no bond status. And I say all that to say that uh, we have plenty of time to continue collecting evidence and, and testing to build our case, uh, so to charge Corey Hill with Shakira's murder. So I'm saying that he is the suspect. We're not looking for anyone else. He will be charged uh, with the murder. So while the investigation continues, it appears that Corey Hill's story has reached a conclusive point. Boston, situated in the northeastern United States, is a vibrant city renowned for its rich history, academic prowess, and diverse culture. Nestled in Massachusetts, it stands as a hub of education, home to prestigious universities like Harvard and MIT. Apart from its cutting-edge academic programs, Boston's lifestyle embodies a dynamic mix of tradition and contemporary living, offering a multitude of cultural experiences, renowned sports teams like the Red Sox and Celtics, and a thriving culinary scene featuring diverse cuisines. However, on November 1, 2023, Boston found itself thrust into the spotlight not for its usual accomplishments, but due to a tragic incident involving a woman named Margaret Mabidu. 30-year-old Margaret Mabidu was a resident of Whitman, a town positioned approximately 23 miles to the south of Boston. Born in 1993, Maggie Mabidu was the youngest member of a family deeply entrenched in the healthcare profession. Both of her two older sisters and her mother were dedicated nurses. The Mabidu family emigrated from Kenya to the United States in 2007. Margaret pursued and earned a nursing degree from Curry College in Milton, Massachusetts, a testament to her commitment to the healthcare field and her dedication to furthering her education in her chosen field of service. For about seven years, she passionately served as a nurse. Her most recent role was at Brockton Area Multiservices, Inc. in Halifax, a nonprofit organization aiding individuals facing developmental disabilities, mental health concerns, and behavioral challenges. Her life followed a familiar routine, characterized by dedicated days of diligent work, and October 30th, 2023 started off no differently. Like any other day, Margaret commenced her day by starting her white Toyota Venza and drove to work in Halifax, dressed in black pants, a gray shirt, and a black cardigan. After a strenuous day of service, she departed for home. However, little did anyone anticipate that that night would mark the final sighting of Margaret Mabidu as the clock struck 11. She was a no-show at her job the next day, which was uncommon for her. Her employer contacted Margaret's family, who notified the police and called nearby hospitals to check if she was a patient. When she was nowhere to be found, the missing persons report was filed. The investigation commenced uncovering a crucial detail. Margaret was romantically involved with a 40-year-old man named Kevin Kengethi, who had been residing in Lowell, a suburb situated in northwest Boston. Along with this, it was revealed that Margaret's cell phone remained active, providing location data via GPS tracking. So, utilizing license plate recognition cameras, law enforcement first traced the movements of Ken Gethy's Toyota SUV, which aligned consistently with the location data from Margaret's phone. 
The sequence of evidence substantiated the growing belief that she'd been indeed been in the company of Kevin Kengethi before she disappeared. Two days after she was last seen, on November 1st, 2023, authorities traced the vehicle's movement from Lowell to the Logan Airport parking garage. In a tragic turn of events, law enforcement discovered Margaret Mabidu's lifeless body inside Kevin's SUV parked in the airport garage. Her body was found in the front passenger seat, bearing slash and stab wounds on her face and neck, as reported by the state police around 6.30 p.m. The scene was described as distressingly bloody, transforming the missing person case into a chilling murder investigation. All attention shifted to Kevin Kengethi as the prime suspect in this heinous crime. Upon deeper investigation, authorities uncovered that Kevin had purchased a plane ticket to Kenya the previous morning. Surveillance footage captured his apartment from the parking garage, depicting his entry into an airport terminal and subsequent boarding of a flight bound for Kenya. Further inquiries into the case are being closely guarded, with details surrounding the motive for the murder remaining undisclosed. Kevin, having fled to Kenya, remains the primary focus of the search efforts, prompting collaboration between local law enforcement and authorities in Kenya to locate him. Suffolk County District Attorney Kevin Hayden has made a public appeal, urging the suspect to surrender himself, emphasizing the importance of seeking justice for Margaret Mabidu. Law enforcement officials have reiterated that there's no perceived threat to the public or travelers at Logan Airport amidst the ongoing efforts to locate the suspect. Despite the ongoing investigations, no recent updates have been released to the public, but according to former Massachusetts State Police Trooper Todd McGee, this is the process that's currently ongoing. Holbrook is a small town located in Navajo County, Arizona. Nestled amidst the beautiful landscapes of northern Arizona, Holbrook offers a laid-back lifestyle that embraces the charm of rural living. The community here is tight-knit, fostering a friendly atmosphere where residents often come together for local events, festivals, and support each other through various community initiatives. Nevertheless, even within this serene rural town, an uncanny incident unfolded in 2023, leaving the community utterly shocked. On November 6, 2023, the Holbrook Police Department was alerted when a missing persons report was filed involving 54-year-old Christy Lynn Romero, who was a divorced mother. The report filed by her family indicated her sudden unresponsiveness to phone calls and her unaccounted whereabouts. Romero's son also reached out to police, saying that he couldn't find his mother at her home. Due to the fact that the door had been kicked in and passed, um involvements with these two we felt that she might be in danger so we entered it as a missing person endangered during the initial 48-hour period after her disappearance officers visited romero's residence where they discovered that she was not present and her vehicle was also missing furthermore evidence of a forced entry into her home was found prompting an extensive nationwide search for both romero and her car additional crucial information that was obtained revealed that just prior to her disappearance Christy Lynn Romero had been involved in a relationship with a 34-year-old man named Richard Rodriguez, but they were later estranged. Consequently, this fact placed Rodriguez as the focal point of the investigation. The Holbrook police suspected Rodriguez of forcibly entering Romero's residence and compelling her to leave. Additionally, they learned that Romero possessed a 9mm handgun, which was not discovered at the scene and was presumed to be in possession of her estranged boyfriend. Efforts to locate Rodriguez commenced, yielding a trail of clues in quick succession. Police Chief Nathan Christensen disclosed that cell phone data indicated the couple's presence on the 10 freeway en route to California, where Rodriguez had familial ties. Newly released surveillance video shows a stop police say Rodriguez made at a Chevron gas station in Arizona while on his way to California Monday. He pulls up at 1239 a.m., seemingly unaware of where the gas cap is because he circles a few times. Christie is nowhere in sight. At one point, the suspect walks up and later appears to fill his tires with air. After a total of about 15 minutes, he leaves. Prompt action by Holbrook police involved contacting the LAPD and California Highway Patrol to alert them about Rodriguez. Then, on November 7, 2023, the Huntington Beach Police responded to a reported family disturbance at a residence situated on Frimmel Lane, California, identified as Rodriguez's family's home, at approximately 5.15 p.m. 
and this very event subsequently marked the conclusion of the search for Romero. Romero's vehicle, a 1995 Red Plymouth Neon, was parked outside the residence, and upon inspection by the police, Romero was tragically discovered deceased in the trunk of her car. A subsequent search of the house led to the apprehension of Rodriguez, who was found inside the residence. He was arrested on the spot by law enforcement authorities. Subsequently, the police records revealed that Romero and Rodriguez had contacted the police multiple times over the last few months due to various incidents. The initial call involved Rodriguez's altercation with another individual at a Holbrook dollar store, where both parties drew knives on each other, although no injuries were reported as a result of the confrontation. The subsequent call stemmed from the couple's residence, where Rodriguez and Romero engaged in a dispute regarding financial matters on October 17, 2023, prompting Rodriguez to contact law enforcement. According to the police chief, Romero expressed her desire to evict Rodriguez from the house due to the disagreement. However, as Rodriguez didn't have an alternative place to stay, a compromise was reached. The couple agreed that Rodriguez could remain in a separate room as long as he respected Romero's space and privacy. On Halloween, the couple made another 911 call due to a dispute over rent. The final altercation occurred on November 1, 2023, where Romero reported to authorities that Rodriguez had threatened her, stating intentions to cause harm to her and her vehicle. During interrogation, Rodriguez denied the allegations against him and claimed that he was the one being threatened by Romero instead. The police investigation revealed that Romero had obtained an order of protection against Rodriguez on November 2, 2023, mandating his departure from their shared residence and requiring him to remain a distance from her. Subsequently, Rodriguez sought refuge at a shelter designated for unhoused individuals. As of now, Rodriguez remains in police custody and the investigation is ongoing as preparations for trial are underway. East Point, situated in Macomb County, Michigan, is a dynamic suburban community located just northeast of Detroit. Known for its convenient location and easy access to major highways, East Point offers a blend of urban amenities and a suburban lifestyle. Residents here enjoy a diverse community with well-maintained neighborhoods and various local parks and recreational facilities. With a range of dining options, shopping centers, and proximity to nearby urban hubs, East Point provides a comfortable and family-friendly atmosphere for its residents. However, the story that we're about to share isn't a regular story for East Point. The case began in September 2023 when Samantha Gwynther, a 47-year-old mother of two, was reported missing by her daughter. Her daughter expressed that while it wasn't entirely unusual for Gwynther to miss phone calls, she hadn't received any communication from her mother since June 18, 2023. Concerned by the extended silence, the daughter raised an alarm regarding Gwynther's absence. The disappearance presented initial challenges for solving, given that the crucial 48-hour window had already elapsed. Tracking Gwynther's whereabouts became increasingly difficult, raising concerns about the possibility of a more serious outcome. Despite initiating the investigation, there were no immediate breakthroughs or significant leads in the initial stages. Nevertheless, on Wednesday, October 25, 2023, East Point Police and Michigan State Police carried out a search warrant at Gwynther's last known address within the Aaron Park housing community. During the search, a distressing and tragic discovery unfolded. Gwynther's lifeless body was found in a storm drain near Hayes Avenue and Stevens Road, marking the worst possible outcome in the search for her. While the details were withheld, on that very day, Gwynther's son, 26-year-old Justin Jackson, and his friend, who was present at Gwynther's residence, were apprehended and placed in custody. However, after interrogation, Jackson's friend was released from custody. During the interrogation, he um, confessed. All signs indicated that uh, she was uh, murdered back on uh, June 18. It was suspected that Gwynther had been murdered on June 18, 2023. Jackson faced severe charges including first-degree murder, tampering with evidence, concealing the death of an individual, and providing false information to law enforcement. If found guilty, he could potentially face a life sentence in prison. To bring clarity to the charges, Jackson was in total charged with two distinct cases, the homicide investigation involving his mother, Samantha Gwynther, and separate drug-related charges for possession of a controlled substance, 
specifically less than 25 grams of cocaine and possession of Xanax. During his arraignment, 38th District Court Judge Kathleen Galen set his bond at $10 million cash surety for the murder case and a $25,000 cash bond for the drug possession charges. However, Jackson pleaded not guilty through legal representation, citing a challenging upbringing marred by drug addiction, instances of assault, and alleged abuse by his father. During Jackson's court appearance, Assistant Prosecutor Rebecca Kelly revealed that Gwynther had reached out to her son due to concerns for the safety of his children. Kelly also mentioned that the individual reportedly inflicted severe harm on Samantha Gwynther, allegedly punching, stabbing, and committing dreadful acts. This occurred purportedly because Gwynther had contacted and conveyed worries regarding Jackson's children and reached out to Child Protective Services. Additionally, it was indicated that multiple weapons were allegedly used during this tragic incident. Jackson's subsequent court appearance for a probable cause hearing was on November 8, 2023. The preliminary exam was slated for November 15, 2023, but as of now, no further updates have been disclosed to the public regarding the case.